welcome back to the channel. This video is going to be a code walkthrough of how to use Payo CMS in the jobs queue to run scheduled background tasks. And in this example, I'm using it for a crypto price tractor. Basically, it runs every minute, fetches prices from this API called CoinGecko, and then based on the settings, it'll trigger an alert to let you know the price changed. Full source code will be provided along with this video. The link's below, so you can pause right now if you want to go check it out and uh, follow along. Thanks for stopping by. Let's get to the code. Okay, a quick project tour. I'm just going to go through the key areas of the project that I'm going to be covering. And so let's open up the side panel a bit so we get a bit, a bit of a better view. So, of course, we will cover the changes that are made in payload config to help the jobs work appropriately. We will cover this process where well, let's go ahead and hit this process tracker this is actually the task that will get called and do all the heavy lifting and then inside our co uh, collections we add a new trackers collection i just left media there it was there already i didn't remove it but the two that matter are users and trackers and the trackers is basically how you enter the information that you need and that you want tracked and that's pretty much it for the files that we're going to touch to get this thing to work appropriately. All right, so let's kind of hop over to payload config TS. Uh, this is where the job schedules are declared and payload co is configured. We register our tasks and then also we set this auto run. So what this is doing, this is saying the task is this process tracker task, which we'll cover later. See this right here. That's what that is. And then this auto run is basically saying, hey, start the jobs queue automatically when you start up. I've set my cron here to process the job every minute. And then a name of the queue is called tracker queue. This jobs collection overrides, really all this does is it allows you to see this payloads jobs collection. The important parts here for you are really tying this process tracker task to this task property here inside of jobs and then configuring how you want to run the cron the queue tracker is a name in case you have multiple queues you can kind of uh, name them appropriately and you get the process tracker let's go back up to see how that's imported and well, that's actually taking so it's exported from this process trackers files which we know but then it needs to be imported it's imported right here also i'll just touch on it but you need to definitely make sure that you include your trackers collection here in your collections. And like I said, all the rest of this stuff is out of the box, which you get default when you install and set up your payload CMS project. All right, let's go to process trackers because that's really where the heavy lifting is done. It's kind of give us some more room here. Also, if you notice, I have used AI to properly JS stock everything. I'll just touch on this send mail up at the top here. I did not integrate an email server in this for the purpose of example, it wasn't important. So what happens when the send mail is called, which is what happens when the price hits a specific trigger, it'll just console log something out so that you know that it actually happened. Uh, if you want to, you can integrate your own email provider here. I, I usually use resend. I find the most success with that, but that's kind of what's going on here. But let's just start at the top here at what the uh, tracker is doing. So first the task can define its own schedule, but since we have defined the same thing inside of jobs, you could actually remove this. This is optional. It's not necessarily needed, but I just put it here just for purpose of explanation. And then down here, we go to the main handler that you need. As the description states, it fetches active trackers, retrieves current prices from CoinGecko API, and process each tracker against the trigger conditions, which we'll set inside of trackers. We'll circle back to that later. Trackers is the collection that each, what, each entry in the collection will get processed. So we just have a log statement here, which kind of lets you know what's going on. Then we initialize payload because you need to make some payload API calls, throw an error if we cannot find payload, and then we wrap this whole thing to try catch loop. And th this is just the logic of what I'm doing inside of my process trackers. Whatever your job is, you would have your logic inside of here. There's some basic things that you need. Like I said, this is optional. You definitely want to set the slug on it. And then inside your handler is basically where you put your business logic. And this is just showing how I can use payload to actually query, get other things and, 
and basically leverage the data that I have inside of payload to potentially make an external API call, which is what I'm doing, and then also update the database and do a bunch of other things. So the first thing we do here is we, get, we query our trackers collection, we get all of the trackers that exist. Then what we have to do is to call this coin ID, basically what we do with the API is you have a comma delimited list of the IDs of each one of the coins that we're tracking. And then we're using this coin gecko API and then we make our API call. This gives us the list of all the uh, coins and then it returns our price for us. If there's an error, we throw an error. Otherwise we take the data, turn it to JSON and then we basically loop through each one of our trackers and we take our coin ID, we get the current price and then we make sure that we have the price data so that we can track it appropriately. We set up the email we need to send it to. We set up our trigger reason and we set trigger to false. And then we attempt to determine if we're using absolute price for the trigger or if we're using percentage, because what you'll see when I show you the trackers, I can say, hey, if my price goes above this fixed price or below this fixed price, then take some action. Otherwise, if it's done by percentage, you know, then we come down here and we handle a percentage calculation and we determine if the price needs to be triggered. So we handle the upper trigger and a lower trigger. And then down here, if the flag was set to is triggered, then we console log that we're going to set, potentially send an email. We generate our fake email body and then we call our send email. And this is where you would potentially have a real uh, email provider to send the email. And then here we use payload again to update the status on the tracker to indicate that it was triggered, the time, the triggered price, and the reason why it was triggered, if it was upper bound or lower bound. If there are any errors, we log the errors, and then we just return success is true, indicating that it worked successfully. Otherwise, we return an error message to indicate that it did not happen successfully. And that's pretty much how the process tracker works. Next, we're going to talk about kind of the last piece, which is a tracker's collection. Okay, so let's talk about the trackers collection, which is really where you set everything up. If you go in here, you can see you have the list of trackers, and then here's kind of how you set up your tracker. So the first thing is let's talk about the access. Once again, you can see, and I say it over and over again, there's re absolutely zero reason for people to not have their code documented now because AI will just generate it for you. It helps you and it helps your whole team. All right, so what we have in this first block is our, we're setting up our access control. So only authenticated users can create a tracker. So you gotta be logged in or you, or you cannot create a tracker. The next rule that we have here is that you can only read your own trackers. So there's no ability for you to read what other tracker someone else sets up. Once again, you, users can only update their own tracker and then users can only delete their own trackers. That's what we have there. All right, next we have this base price hook. The bottom line is what we're doing with the base price is that we're making an API call out using CoinGecko to get what the current price is at the time you're attempting to create this. And so what this before change hook does, it executes right before you create it or you update the tracker to get the current price and apply it. Where is it, where is it, where is it, it's a lower bound. It's like I'm not displaying it, I'm just setting it, but I'm not displaying it. And then what'll happen is after it gets set, we generate this plain English description of what the track will be, and you'll see what the price was set to be um, at the time it was saved. So that's what's going on there. A little confusing, but when I walk through the demo, you'll see it a little bit clearer. And so we make sure we have a user, then we get the user ID, and then, so the description states here for percentage-based trackers, we automatically, fetch and set the current base price. So you see here, if I select percentage change, it'll set a base, it'll set a base price in here. So it doesn't matter for absolute price because with absolute price, all you care is if the price goes above a certain amount or below a certain amount. But with percentage change, I need a default base price to determine my percentage change on. So that is why we only do run this before hook on trigger type of percentage. All right, so what it does is it makes this uh, call at the coin gecko to get the current price based on the coin ID that you specified up here at the top. It gets that price, pulls off the price, verifies this number, and then it uses this data represents this, this data field represents the data that's associated with this entry, this collection entry. And so what we're doing is we're gonna take the current price and we're gonna sign it 
And then what that will do, since this hook is called, excuse, before creating or updating tracker, it will set the price at that point on the data field. And then that will get persisted to the database. All right, what else do we have going on inside of here? This is just basic setting up of my field. I set up my fields, I provide a description, trigger type, normal. I'm just kind of going through here to make sure there's not anything that's not basic payload, something that's different. Uh, we can see this in this admin, this condition, this indicates whether or not to show this field. So it's only gonna show the field that the data trigger type is price. So that's the only time it matters. So you can see if I switch this, the field appears. If I switch it back, the field goes away. And then we're gonna do, so that's, ha that's the upper and lower bound for fixed prices. And then we have the same thing for percentage prices. So basically it's hiding and showing the field based on what the trigger type is I have up here. You can see how the fields disappear. All right, the radio status, nothing magical there. This trigger description is kind of interesting because what it will do is it has this hook. It basically takes all the data that it currently has and it puts your trigger description in plain English down here. So let's say, I'll just use some fields from before and let's change this to, let's set the absolute price and let's say 1,000 and lowest price is zero. And you can see how nothing's here yet because this is before change. So it'll get updated when I save this. So let's see when I save and you can see it updated it to say, alert me when Solana rises above a thousand. So that's what this hook does. It sees what the trigger type type is and that determines the text to use, the text to use for a trigger type around price. If it's percentage, it determines the text to use and how to appropriately update this field. And then based on the conditions is whether or not it will actually set the appropriate information in here. If no base price has been set, which I don't think that this should be an issue any longer because we covered it in the hook. So I think, hmm, that's interesting. The question is which one's gonna get triggered first? Because it might be possible that we're hitting this description before the, um, what's this called up here? Before this before change is called. And so at that point, it's possible that there is no base price. And so to just be safe, it's probably why I put this code down here to basically get the base price. And then that's it. And then we update it so you can see it the field. And then these other fields will get set when they're triggered. It'll let you know when it was triggered at, it'll let you know the trigger price, and it'll let you know the trigger reason. Okay, is there anything? And that's it. Oh yes, we do have this relationship so that we kind of know who owns this trigger. And so this ties relationship back to the user and that's that. What else do we have to cover? Quickly cover the user collection. There's nothing new going on here. This is basically out of the box. This is what you get out of the box. No changes were required for that. And it's really being used for the access control inside of the trackers that are created here. Because remember, only certain users, users can only access their own content basically. All right. So we have this tracker, which has been running this whole time I've been talking. And also for those who haven't seen it, I'll put a link to it, but I have a uh, short that I did, which kind of walked through just the UI of setting up these trackers and everything much more specifically, but let's see what we got going on down here. So you can see it's running, it finds the trackers to process, and then it iterates through each one of them. So let's go back. Let's go back to trackers. You see, I have the three trackers. Each one of them is active. None of them have been triggered yet. But let's delete this one because this is probably never going to happen with Solana for those who follow Bitcoin. I mean, uh, cryptocurrency. So let's delete that one. And then let's modify this Bitcoin one here to a percentage that we believe it will change within the next couple of minutes so that we can actually see it working. So I'm going to change this to 0.01. So if it moves up by 0.01 or moves down by 0.01, then trigger it. And you can see this was the base price from last time, but when I save this, it should update this base price. So let's save it. Okay, so it saved it now. And if Bitcoin rises by 0.0% or drops by 0.0% from this, what is this? Um, 115,000, right? So you see it just triggered it because you can see here our base price was this 115,452. So it has the base, 
it got the current price to be this number, 150,061. It changed by 0.34%. So it triggered it. And this is where if you had your own email provider, it would send this email with the price of Bitcoin. This is to Bitcoin to drop below your target. And it gives you the base price that it that the trigger was entered at and what the current price is, percentage change, and when it was triggered. So that is the thing running. Hopefully you found this helpful. And you know, some customizations you might want to do is you might want to come inside of here and once again go into your payload config and kind of change how frequently the queues are processed. Also, as I mentioned, potentially adding your own email provider or some sort of uh, SMS tool like Twilio or something like that to send you text messages on the change. Please also note that there are rate limits on this Gecko API. Right now I'm just running on the free tier and that's about it. But hopefully this is a complete minimal setup for scheduling jobs with payload CMS. Grab the source code, play around with it a little bit, add your email or text message service and see how it works for you. Please make sure you like, subscribe, drop any questions or comments below. Also, always please leave suggestions on other type of content you'd like to see around Payload CMS. Thanks again. Bye now.